Welcome to Trust the Process. In this video, we are going to answer the question that reads A spring that obeys Hooke's law as a spring constant k. Show that the energy stored E in the spring when it has been extended elastically by the amount x is given by work done is equal to 1 over 2 kx squared. So from this expression, from the equation given here, you can clearly see that the energy that is going to be stored is going to be the same as the work done by the spring. So for any spring that obeys Hooke's law, we know according to what Hooke's law states. Hooke's law states that the force applied or the force exerted on the spring should be directly proportional to the amount by which that spring is either extended or are compressed. So graphically we can show Hooke's law by saying we are going to have a Cartesian plane like this. In the x-axis, we can put x, which is the extension. Then in the y-axis, we can put the force, the spring force, measured in newtons. So, Hooke's law graphically can be represented like this. We are just going to have a straight line. Meaning, as the force is increased, the extension or compression also increases until a certain point which is this point here so this point we can say it is going to be the elastic limit meaning after beyond this point this spring won't obey Hooke's law you can apply a greater force but you are not going to expect a change in the extension meaning this won't will no longer be a straight line. The relationship between the force and the extension or compression won't be direct, as you can see. Now, this question, for us to show that the energy stored in the spring is given by this, we are just considering the spring that obeys Hooke's law, meaning we are just going to consider this point and before this point. So we're just going to consider this region here, not the plastic region. This, this is called the plastic region because the spring is more like deformed. All right. So the force that we are talking about here is nothing but the restoring force. And the restoring force is given by negative kx. So now considering the magnitude, the magnitude of this restoring force is just going to be Kx. Why is it negative? It's negative because at any interval, this force will be in the opposite direction to the displacement. Let's say we have um, a spring which is extended in this direction. So this spring that is extended in this direction, when you let go of this spring, you're expecting it to go in the opposite direction. So the displacement was in this direction, but it will, the force that is going to cause this spring go this side, it is in the opposite direction. That's why we put a negative. Same applies when you compress it. Displacement will be in this direction, while the force will be in the opposite direction. Okay, so now, in the y-axis we have the restoring force, which is just the magnitude of the restoring force. And then in the x-axis, we have the extension. They specified in the question to say it has been extended. So we have the extension, which is just having the value x. So the coordinates here, this is the origin. You have 0, 0. Then at that point, you are going to have x, kx. We are just considering the magnitude of the uh, stirring force. So why am I using this triangle this is the point where the spring will stop obeying Hooke's law so as you can see from the sketch the force the spring force isn't going to be a constant it is going to be varying as you can see at this point when the force let's say is 2 this 2 newton is going to cause some extension 
when the force is 4, it will also cause some extension. When the force is 6, just like that. So, since the force is not constant, you cannot just say work done is equal to force times distance. No, we can't say this. We know that the work done, there's a relationship between the work done by the spring and the energy that is stored, okay, in that spring. So the work done and the energy stored in the spring are practically the same. That's why you're seeing W here. It is representing the work done. So all you need to do is to find the work done by this force. But since this force is not a constant force, you can't use this formula to find the work done. Instead, you are going to find the work done by this small amount, the work done by all the forces as they are changing, then add them, making us have how many approach? I think we're going to have two approaches in this question. You can tackle this question using two approaches. The first approach will just basically be finding the area under the curve. In this case, we're going to be finding the area of a triangle. So when you find the area of the triangle, the work done by the spring will just be equal to the area of that triangle. So the area of the triangle, we know it is 1 over 2 base times the height, which is 1 over 2. The base here, it is the distance from here to there, and that is our x. And then the height, it is the k, kx. That is what we have. So the work done, which is the area, is just 1 over 2 kx squared. And this is the energy stored in the spring. So why were you finding the area? Because when you find the area, you are counting for all these small forces up to the elastic point. That's the reason. All right. So now let's move to the other approach. The other approach is just by using integration method. So using integration method, why are we using integration method? We have small discrete points. We have a lot of, it's more like they have told you to count the number of sugar crystals that are in a 2 kg sugar. How do you count those? You can't start counting one by one, obviously. You are going to just sum from a certain point up to another point. So integration is just more like summing the work done by, we know that this this force here is going to do some work. The force here, a certain period, a certain interval of force is going to do some work, causing a certain extension. Okay? So we're just going to choose small intervals, then some those. So if you say the work done by a small force, which you can call the work, will be integrated over the extension or it will cause some extension small extension which you are going to call dx so here you know that work done for a constant force is just given by uh, f times distance so now here we are choosing a small portion of the force hence that small portion of the force is just going to do a small amount of work which are calling d W. D, you can think of it as a discrete, a very small amount of work. So DW will be equal to F. So this DW, it is a small amount of work caused by this force, which is a small amount of a force. And this uh, force will cause some extension, which you are going to call DX. Because this extension is also going to be small, that's why we are putting a DX. So, here, what we've done is, we've just chosen a small point, a small portion of the force, and a small portion of the displacement here. So, if you sum the displacements up to, from starting from x is equal to 0, up to x, and then you sum the forces from 0 up to that point, then you have found the work done by that force. So finding the work done by that force, we're just going to integrate to add all the works, all these small works done by the small interval, the force, from 0 to x. From 0 to x, we are going to account for everything. We're going to account for the entire area 
under the curve. So now here you just have to say uh, integrating. Integration means you are summing. So on the left hand side, we are going to be integrating with respect to w. On the right hand side, we are going to be integrating with respect to x. So here, meaning we are summing those small wakes leading to a big wake known as the w. And then the force that we are dealing with here, it is nothing but uh, the restoring force. So we are going to have kx then dx. But remember, what we have is the limits in the x-axis we have. The limits in the x-axis is that we are starting from x equal to 0 to x equal to x. So the work done here is just going to be equal to, when you are integrating the rules of integration, you fact out the constant. So the constant is going to be out there. Then you integrate this x with respect to x. So the work done is just going to be k then x squared over 2 using power rule from 0 to x. So work done will be nothing but k x squared over 2 when you substitute these limits. So substituting the limits, uh, you have to say start with the upper limit where there is x, you put x to be x squared over 2 minus the lower limit, you have 0 squared over 2, hence giving us that. This is the same as 1 over 2kx squared. That is also the other approach of answering this question. So basically, the work done by the spring is nothing different from the energy that the spring is going to store. Alright, so if you compare this, this you are going to find that the elastic potential energy is given by 1 over 2 kx squared. So this is what they mean. The energy that is stored in the spring is called the elastic potential energy, which is nothing but the work done by that spring in extending or compressing compressing it. All right, so see you in the next video where we are going to be answering a series of questions under Hooke's law. Thank you for your time.